Do Mylar emergency shelters actually work? Will they save your life in an environmental condition like what I'm dealing with here in North Dakota? Right now it's about 30 degrees outside and we're expecting snow as well and it's pretty windy. So in an emergency, let's say worst case scenario, EMP goes off. In your get home bag, you have a Mylar shelter with a Mylar blanket and a Mylar sleeping bag. Is that enough to keep you alive? Will that at least do the bare minimum job of providing you shelter on your journey back to wherever you need to go? Let's find out in this video. So will a Mylar shelter kit actually keep you alive during an emergency? Well, that's something we're definitely going to discuss here. And real quick, I wanna go ahead and talk about the Mylar shelter kit that was sent to me by Practical Survival, just so you can see the equipment that I'm using for this video and get an idea of whether or not everything in it actually worked or if there's environmental conditions that have to be considered before relying on some of these products. And at the end of the video, you'll understand how some things did work and other things didn't and what you should expect from kits like this one. All right, so here's the 10 piece emergency Mylar shelter kit that was sent to me by Practical Survival. They wanted me to check it out and then let you guys know if I thought it was a good deal, which at 25 bucks, I would say that it is. And there are links to this in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And there may or may not be a familiar face here on the labeling, possibly Southern Prepper One, you guys let me know in the comments below. But let's go ahead and open this up and see what you get for 25 bucks here, which I think is a pretty good deal, all right? And remember, Mylar emergency shelters are just that. They're made for temporary emergency use. So don't expect this to be some kind of long-term, live in it forever during SHTF style of shelter, all right? So here we have a locking carabiner on the side, which could be useful when you're building the shelter. Um, and everything's contained inside of this bag. We have the tent itself, which inside here is the tent as well as the paracord you need in order to set it up. And it does have grommets at the bottom of the tent for using stakes in order to make it a little bit more tear resistant, but we'll see how that works out when I actually go out and test it. And then I also see that there's a whistle here on the end of this cord, so that's kind of interesting. And over here we have emergency poncho, which is also mylar, so it will help you maintain your body heat while also protecting you from the elements. We have a plastic poncho, which is just for protecting you from rain, basically. So if it's not cold, or maybe if it's even hot, but it's raining, this would be what you would want to use instead of the Mylar, because that might be too warm. And we have Mylar emergency blanket, which could be a good ground cover for going underneath the tent, if that's something you need to use, depending on the environment. If it's very cold on the ground, you might want to have that additional layer, or you could use this inside of the tent in order to give yourself that additional layer there. Um, this is also good for reflecting the heat from a fire or something like that. So definitely another good piece of the kit. Over here, we have the sleeping bag itself. So basically it's a blanket, but it's fully enclosed. So that way you can trap as much of your heat in there as you can. Set that over here. And then you also have the four tent stakes in here as well. So at the end of the day, you get a lot in this kit for 25 bucks. And for an emergency, if you had to go set up a shelter suddenly and you were in, you know, bad conditions, or maybe um, it just meant that your journey was gonna last longer than an overnight trip, then you at least have the bare necessities to be able to do so. And for 25 bucks and for how lightweight everything in this kit is, I mean, it's really hard to beat. So definitely something I thought was worth sharing. And then let's just talk about the performance of all the products here and whether or not Mylar can really save your life in an emergency situation, especially if you're talking about like a cold environment like the one I'm in. Okay, so the tent just could not survive the wind gusts out here right now. We're talking 30 or 40 mile per hour wind gusts, which is what we experience out here in North Dakota quite a bit. And at the end of the day, the grommets that were for the stakes were good. They were strong, but they just couldn't hold up. And then the tent still survived on the line. However, it started to tear where the grommets tore out of the ground. So because of that, it no longer became a possible shelter for this kind of condition. So what I did is I pivoted to the emergency blanket being a ground cover and then the emergency sleeping bag being more like a bivy system. We're going to see what the temperature difference is from inside of the sleeping bag compared to the outside temperature. Right now it's raining, it's cold, it's windy, but we got to test this stuff out or we don't know if we can rely on it in a survival situation. And one good thing about this kit is that it gave me all these options to work with. So the fact that I have the bag and the blanket to pivot to when the tent failed is a good thing. Thing. having redundancy is important so yeah if the conditions were more calm or if it was just a cold night or even just a
just a summer night where you needed some kind of comfort, then I think the tent would have done perfectly fine. But it's just not meant for these kind of conditions. And it just goes to show you that by leaving it outside for a couple hours like I did in the wind and the rain and the snow, that these are not permanent shelters. So these are not really necessarily, you know, bug out quality shelters. This is better for get home bag quality shelters or in your vehicle style shelters that are emergency, temporary use only that you're just trying to get back to your location with and you might have to hunker down in a shelter overnight just to make that journey. So I do think that's a big point that I'm bringing back home from this whole experience. But I do wanna go ahead and uh, take a look inside the bag here and just kind of see what the temperature is. Of course, it's in the 30s here right now. Um, so anything above that is good. But obviously the way Marley works is that it, it prevents your body heat from escaping, but it doesn't gain temperature. It just reduces the amount of heat that you lose over time. So we can't expect a huge temperature difference in compared to you know what we're seeing on the outside however if it's better than above freezing you're probably going to stay alive longer than the alternative so i want to go ahead and check that out we'll kind of see where we're at at this point all right so clearly it's getting kind of dark out and yes i am wearing sunglasses but it's mostly to keep the rain and snow out of my eyes while i'm recording so one thing i will say is that i'm actually relatively warm inside of this bivy i've created here the ground cover is doing a decent job of insulating my body from the snow However, I mean, I can still tell that I'm on top of something very cold, um, but inside of the bivy, the temperature is relatively warm. So like I said, it's about 32, 34 degrees right now, a little bit of rain. It's definitely windy if you can't tell, um, but I do have a thermometer in here with me. Now I don't have a digital one because mine decided to crap out on me. So we gotta go with mercury here. But what you can see here is that the temperature right now, can I get that to focus for everybody here? I don't know if you can read that, and it looks like it might have a mirror effect on it, but we're looking at about 55 degrees right now inside of the bivy. Now, that doesn't sound extremely warm, but compared to the outside temperature, that's pretty good. And it's definitely gonna keep you out of hypothermic ranges, which is what the whole point of these style of shelters is, is to keep you from having hypothermia. So let me go ahead and grab a light and see if that might help a little bit. You know, you gotta assume you have your EDC gear with you if you're doing this kind of venture and it does look like it's mirrored but I think you can tell here where the line is so that's the temperature inside right now just reverse your eyes and you should be able to see it the correct way <laughs> all right so one thing that we can take away from this experience is that yes um, the tents that are made out of mylar they're not made for dealing with super harsh conditions they will tear um, they're just not made for that if you do need a temporary shelter and you're on a more calm night even if it's cold as long as you're not in super windy stormy conditions it'll probably do the job but even so with the sleeping bag and the Mylar blanket, I'm able to stay warm. Nothing has torn in regards to uh, those two items. And I am still in the same exact conditions that the tent failed in, which is windy, wet, cold, and harsh. And at the same time, I'm warm enough in this bag right now where I'm pretty sure I could go to sleep and be okay. So 55 degrees, doable. Of course, I'm still wearing my winter gear, so it kind of helps insulate me even further. And at the same time, we're talking about a 20 degree temperature difference. So maybe if the weather was negative 20 right now, we'd be having a different conversation. But in that situation, you would definitely require a fire. And right now I'm not using a fire at all. The other thing to consider is that if I had a fire right now, I'd have a, a way more heat, okay, than what I have right this second. And having a fire is what I would suggest to try to do. But in these windy, wet conditions, it might be very difficult. And you might not have the right supplies or dry wood or anything else with you that could actually get a sustainable fire going. So I wanted to test this out without the idea of using a heat source to try to make things warmer. And at the end of the day, I think it's doing the job. So what I wanted to talk about in this video mostly was you have to try out this gear. You have to get out and use it or else you won't know when it will fail. And now I know that using a Mylar tent shelter isn't worth it if the conditions are too harsh. There's too much wind and it's storming or something else similar. It might not even be worth trying to put up because at the end of the day, if you tear it and you ruin what it is you were trying to accomplish, you probably wasted a lot of energy. You put yourself out in the environment for too long and exposed yourself to the cold and the wet and the rain and everything else for an unnecessary amount of time. So now I know that in those conditions, I can pivot over to the sleeping bag and the blanket as a bivy system and still maintain a good amount of body heat and at the same time, get through the night in order to make my journey back. So like I said, get home bag, good to go, okay? Um, emergency vehicle kit, good to go. Is this my forever 
inch bag leaving forever and using this as a shelter in the apocalypse situation? Probably not. But in that scenario, you definitely have to invest in something a little bit more durable for the long term, which is something we'll talk about here on the channel relatively soon. So I wanted to bring you this information share my experience with you about the whole situation and uh, give you some ideas about what will or won't work for your emergency kits and hopefully this gives you something to think about and that you didn't just buy one of those you know don't die in the woods tents or this kit from practical survival which there are links in the description below for um, without even understanding the fact that if a hurricane's coming you're probably sol and that is something that we should all be aware of before the emergency hits Hopefully this gave you some good information. If you need anything else from me at all, magicprepper.com. And that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.